to the sitting channel. Hope you're all staying safe and well. We take a break from uh, the Premier League pressures and uh, look towards the Champions League pressures. Yes, uh, spot one difficult thing for another, can't we? Yes, we're going to have a look at Manchester City against Bayern Munich on the 11th of April 2023. Of course, the Champions League quarterfinals, the first leg. So I always like to be away first. But hey, if we get through this, we've got the benefit of being. Uh, home for the second leg in the semi-final. But let's get through this first, one game at a time, as the as we all say. And take place at 8 p.m. kickoff, 11th of April. So please join me for that. If you are new to the channel, please push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications, previews like today, information, vlogs, reviews, everything past, present, and forever as far as city concerned. As long as my little body keeps going anyway, that's for sure. So you can press that notification button, that subscribe button. If you're pressing buttons, if you can press the like button as well, uh, much appreciated. Try to get about 25 likes for, for these vlogs. So your support is very much welcome if you can do that for me. And of course, I'd uh, love to hear your comments. All comments, very, very welcome. Well, constructive ones. We do get the you do get the odd idiot, but uh, yeah, I've sort of weaned those out over the years. But uh, yeah, apart from all you regular idiots, of course, who I'm used to, and you know me anyway. So there you go. Right, let's get on with this. Toe-to-toe, uh, -to -toe, of course, the two teams heading favouritism at the bookies. We'll have a look at the odds later on. I think the other six clubs left in this are... Uh, uh, a sigh of relief that at least one of the big big guns is going to go out of this round so it's good for them perhaps not so much for us it's on BT Sport our overall competitive record against Bayern Munich get reads played 6 won 3 lost 3 so straight down the middle although they do have one more goal than us we've scored 9 they've scored 10 and previously I'll take you back to season 2014-15 that was the last time we played them at home and it was match day 5 of that Champions League season, the 25th of November 2014. Was it warm? No, it was probably pretty cold. I can't remember now. It's a long time ago. It's not eight and a half years ago, flipping heck. And of course, it was City 3 and Peps. Peps buying Munich 2. Yes, we, we slaughtered him, didn't we? Uh, uh, it, it, who, who expected him to come after that? Thrashing we gave him. Well, it wasn't really, was it? Uh, this little excerpt is from BBC Sport about the night because I'd forgotten most of it. Uh, Bayern had to play with 10 men for 70 minutes after Benatia was sent off for a foul on Aguero that saw him put the whole saw, put Sergio put us ahead from the penalty spot. That wasn't always an, a nailed on thing with Sergio in penalties, was it? But the Germans turned the game around and on its head before half time through Zabi Alonso's free kick and a Robert Lewandowski's header. And that was how it stood until a stirring finish. That's what the BBC say a stirring finish from City and Aguero. First, a striker pounced on Alonso's characteristically wayward pass to run clear and beat Bayern Munich keeper Manuel Neuer. Yeah, he was not there tomorrow, is he? He's not there on Tuesday, is he? Then he took advantage of more sloppiness from Jerome Boateng for the last-minute winner. It was a remarkable turn of events. I remember being happy, I think, and another dramatic chapter in City's history, and we carry on regardless, don't we? In charge of this, well, we, we're going all Spanish for this, guys, getting all tapas out or whatever they are. I'm not, they have in Spain, is it tapas? Anyway, get that out for these guys. Jesus Gil Manzano is the referee. He's 39 years old. This is vital statistics. Charged of 28 matches so far this season. He likes to show a card or two. He's averaged five a game as far as yellow cards are concerned. 144. Uh, yellow cards and eight red cards so he likes to show a red card and he's never refereed City before I don't know if he's done by Munich I'm not that bothered but he's never refereed us before but in the last time he refed an English game an English team 10 yellow cards during a clash between well yeah Borussia Dortmund and Chelsea so we'll have to see his line was a Diego Barbero Angel or Angel Nevado fourth official Jose Luis Manuera uh, video assistant referee Juan Martinez Manuera. I wonder if they're related. Probably not. I got all confused writing this because I, I started doing the graphics for it. And I thought, I'm getting, I'm getting all the names mixed up. It's no wonder, is it? Assistant of VAR guy is Alejandro Hernandez. So they're all from Spain. So how are Bayern Munich doing? Well, a bit of a niggledy-piggledy start, a bit inconsistent from them, but they certainly seem to, unfortunately for us, picked up fairly recently. They lead the Bundesliga by two points from Dortmund. Uh, that was helped courtesy of leapfrogging them a couple of games ago in the league. Uh, on April Fool's Day, they beat them 4-2. Uh, Bayern beat Dortmund 4-2. 
And then they got, uh, just as I'm recording this, uh, yesterday on the Saturday when we were down in Southampton, they got a win at Freiburg, who were placed fourth in the league as well at the time. I think they dropped to fifth now on, on, on the basis of that. Uh, they previously had a setback against the same team, Freiburg. They lost at home in the fourth uh, to Freiburg in the DFB Pokal Cup quarter final with an injury time winner. So they got revenge for that. And in the group stages of the Champions League, of course, they were six for six, only conceding two goals. And it wasn't exactly an easy group, was it? Uh, they did have some tough games to play in there as well. And they defeated PSG fairly comfortably in the round of 16. Though it wasn't without the odd square, odd square, odd scare uh, when in a 1-0 victory away and a 2-0 at home. The big shock, of course, was dispensing of Nagelsmann. Yeah, though the arrival of Tuchel may, may for me not be a bad thing. I don't worry too much about it. I and mean, we know Pep had his usual brain fart when they'd managed to beat us three times uh, quite close together, weren't it, for, uh, recently? Again, obviously, including the Champions League final. But uh, we sort of had no problem against Tuchel's team the next season, that's for sure. So I'm not too worried about that, as long as uh, Pep, of course, doesn't overthink things too much and overthink too too much. It couldn't really get much tougher for us, I don't think. Uh, some people were saying, I'm glad we avoided Napoli, but this is tough. This is the toughest I think we could have picked. Uh, I don't think Tuchel's way of playing is changing too much at the moment. Been a few gripes about it, but there's not too much. You've still got the same pool of players and they've still got the same talent there, that's for sure. And defensively, they were always, always a little bit suspect. But uh, I don't think things have changed too much while he gets used to the... He's only, well, he's only been there, what, a couple of weeks while he gets used to things there. Uh, if Bayern have, have a fault, of course, as I said, the defence isn't great. I don't think they always travel well either uh, as far as abroad. So that's not a bad thing. And, of course, as I said, the keeper, Noor, is a has got a, a sort of long-term injury. So uh, I think it's Sommers in net at the moment. He's OK, he's fine, but... I'm happier that Neuer isn't in it, that's for sure. Their current top scorers and assisters, Chaupo Moting is the big guy. He scored 14, assisted 2. Musiala scored 11, assisted 10. Nabri, yeah, scored 11, assisted 7. Sane scored 11, assisted 6. He's doing pretty well. I've seen his little highlights of games. I've watched He's done a good job. Mane scored 9. Assisted five, so not, so not setting things alight, but having a pretty decent season. So that's uh, a lot of firepower there, and uh, that's even excluding some defenders who can go up and score a goal as well. So let's face it, it's not gonna it's not gonna be easy. But as ever, uh, as ever, it's always gonna be about what Pep and City can do. And we've got a good record against German teams. And despite OK recently uh, being on a bit of a run, we've not not played fantastic teams, but uh, we've done what we've had to do. And we seemingly hit a little bit of form, despite a, a change and a tweak in Pep's tactics. With the home game, of course, coming up against Leicester at the weekend. Uh, I don't think there was ever, ever any doubt whether it was Leicester or Arsenal we were playing that we were going to go strong in this head. Anyway, I don't think Pep's going to rest anyone for this Champions League game. And my only gripe, and it is a little bit of a gripe because Pep knows his stuff, Pep knows what he's doing. And this new system is incorporated now with Stones operating sort of as a double pivot, uh, another midfielder, and his criticism of Walker. It's still in its infancy, still in its early days, and uh, uh, against the Southampton, we seemed we seemed to improve going back to uh, a more normal Pep setup with Walker and Bernardo. So that does puzzle me a little bit, but I'm sure uh, Pep isn't going to totally uh, forget this system that he's uh, he's worked on uh, for however long. It's not it's not for five minutes, is it? That's for sure. So in this, I don't expect anything too different to what he's been saying. And as I said, he's not going to slag Walker off and all of a sudden start relying on him, is he? He wants Walker to pull his socks up and perhaps change into a different system. But, as I said, perhaps perhaps Pep's changed tack for this game with Bayern Munich. Thanks, he's, he's had it on the horizon. He's, he's trying to think of ways to beat Bayern Munich to get to that semi-final of the Champions League. So, so perhaps this is all to do with that, making sure we get the best out of Haaland uh, and, and making these little tweaks. So we need to, obviously, we'd still have a little extra dimension, don't we? If, we? if we want the sort of extra defensive element that Stone, Stone sort of releases players like Gundo and KDB to be creative, but against Bayern Munich, there's no need why they can't be more defensive as well from those more advanced positions. 
I think the team that started against Southampton is probably Pep's idea of his strongest lineup, give or take one or two. Of course, we've still got Ford and injured. On the bench, only perhaps Bernardo for me, and to a lesser extent, Walker and Lewis uh, are options for Pep in, in, for this game. Alvarez may play bridesmaid again. I can't see him stepping into this. Mares, though, the weakest link against the Saints, and Pep may sacrifice him as he didn't play him against Leipzig in that 7 0, did he? But. Uh, and the flexibility and non-stop energy and obviously skill of Bernardo, perhaps will put him in. Walker in the main because of injury, hasn't featured much in the Champions League this season. Uh, will he get a rare start in this? But uh, paying due respect to Bayern, Bayern's front line, perhaps he will. But as we said, Pep's, Pep's going for this Stones option. And why will he, will he sort of start Stones in a sort of uh, sort of falling back into a right-back position of four defenders with the three main guys we'll talk about in a minute in my 11? Or, or will he just start with Walker, just have the basic uh, four at the back and go from there? be interesting to see. So... Based on those little ifs and, ifs and what maybes and stuff like that, my expected Pep 11 for this one is that Pep's not going to change. I don't think Pep's going to change his thinking. I don't think now he's committed himself to this Stones double pivot, etc., which, as I said, does seem to release Gundo and KDB a little bit more. Uh, why would he do anything against uh, Bayern Munich? But, I mean, obviously, he might pay the respects and think too much and stick Walker back in. But this is my eleven. Let me know what you think, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'm going to go for Edison. I'm going to play Stones there ahead of Walker. Akanji, Diaz and Aki, I think that's probably set in stone. Rodri, Gundo, KDB again. And up front, yeah, I think Mares is going to get let off for the game against Southampton, where he was probably below par of all the City players. Mares, Haaland and Grealish. As I said, so he could risk Stones as a right-back, wing-back rather than Walker. Uh, probably, you know, I think that's the option he's going to go for with this new pivot. Alvarez to miss out again, although Mares has sort of uh, got in this based on based on formation rather than the fact he had any, anything to do with the fact he came out of the Southampton game in good fettle. And yes, the big question mark there for me, of course, is no Bernardo again. But that's probably why Stones is changing position because he's, he's playing a system to get used to not having Bernardo. Is it the right time to experiment? Well, only Pep will know, and uh, I think Pep, Pep, the more we play it, the more we'll get used to it, so we'll see. Let me know what you think, guys. Anyway, I'm great to hear your 11s, any changes to that, I think. If, I, I'm hoping to get 9 or 10 out of 11 with that one. If we get a feeble 8 like I did against Southampton, I may as well, may as well give up, but uh, let's let's see what happens. Let me know what you think, guys. It'd be great to hear from you. Predictions for the match. Yeah, Andy Morrison is predicting a 2-1 win, and I'm going to be totally boring and say the same. I'm predicting a 2-1 win as well. Uh, we So, uh, not, not just to say unlike me to agree with Andy, but I did the same with the last game against Southampton. We both said 3-0, so at least we got the goal winning margin correct. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. On to a quick look at the ga the gambling, the bookies. Please, I don't condone gambling when the fun stops. Stop. And don't forget, these are average prices. You can probably get slightly better if you shop around. I'll just take an average of uh, a few bookies. So in the Champions League, yeah, City still f well, firm favourites, probably could you call it that. Yeah, 9-4 to four still for City to win the Champions League. Bayern Munich is 7-2. to two. Napoli, third favourites at 4-1. to one. Uh, The match odds, City at 8-11. to 11. So again, uh, if you don't mind betting odds on, value, always value on City in a big game. 8-11 to 11 on a draw is 3-1. to one, And Bayern Munich at 10-3. to three. First goal scorers. Haaland, obviously 11 to 4. Mares is 15 to 2. KDB 9s. Grealish is 10s. And Gundo is 11 to 1. Why not score against the German team? And if you look at the Bayern Munich guys, uh, Chaupo Moting, who leads their goal scoring charts, he's 17 to 2. Mane is 9 to 1. And Nabry is 10 to 1. Anytime goal scorer, yeah, ignoring the obvious ones around 2 to 1. You can get Chaupo, Motang, and Mane for 3 to 1. You get KDB for 3 to 1. Nabry's 7 to 2. Gundogan's 4 to 1. And Sane, who's, uh, as I said, little snippets I've seen, is playing pretty well. You get 9 to 2 on him. Correct score. I can see goals in this. I don't think it's going to be a nil-nil of this, do you? 
Um, obviously, back in 14 15 when we won 3 2, that's 33 to 1. If you fancy a 3 2 City win, if you fancy the predictions, me and Andy, 2 1, you get 15 to 2. If you fancy buying to win it 2 1, it's 14 to 1. If you fancy buying to win it 3 2, it's just as much chance as us winning it 3 2 because the bookies think it's the same, 33 to 1. Half time, full time, City, City, 7 to 4. A draw and then City to win is 4 to 1. Buying and buying is 13 to 2. A draw and buying to win is 9 to 1. And a draw and a draw is 11 to 2. I like the goals over under. I can see over two and a half easily for this, and that's not bad if you like. If you don't mind odds on eight to thirteen on, that's okay. Over three and a half, very very feasible. Six to four against hat tricks. Oh, I got to look at Ireland, don't we? Ireland hat trick fourteen to one. Not overly generous. Score two or more for Ireland is seven to two. Both teams to score. Got to be a yes, hasn't it? I would have thought. I mean, I'm very surprised if both teams don't score in this one. And bookies agree four to seven on, so still not bad. And a no for both teams to score no is eleven to eight against winning margin. City one goal thirteen to five. City two goal is four to one. Bayern one goal is eleven to two, and two goal is twelve to one to score first. Yeah, again, not overly bad on City eight to fifteen on, and Bayern is thirteen to eight against. There you go. So some interesting prices. As I say, when you when we play good teams, you get some good prices on City. And they say if you, if you fancy bets on the opposition, sometimes you know you can also bet on the opposition, not necessarily to beat us, but obviously to to get on the score sheet and things like that. Why not? So there you go. Let me know anything you're having a go on. It'd be great to hear from you. I'll be back, of course, with the ratings and talking point show. Both will be out on Wednesday following. And then I've got a busy few days. I'm in work for five days, so I'll be throwing stuff out as and when I can, of course, up to the preview of the Leicester City game. And, of course, there's a couple of programme watches to come out. There's the Southampton away programme watch and Bayern Munich at home to come as well over the next few days. So hopefully you can join me for that. Let me know, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your feelings. Bit say another another big game, another big week. Uh, they all are at the moment, aren't they? To get to the get to the, the the vital part of the season, of course, where it all all goes wrong or it all goes right. So uh, fingers crossed, it all goes right. Thanks for watching. Until we meet again, and that's one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Bye for now.